It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science game show here in the Prince George's Schools, where we test science IQs. See how scientifically illiterate you are and play along today. Both of today's teams have won once previously, and today's winner moves on to the semifinal eliminations, one step closer to this year's finale. So we've got two great teams here today. They hail from Judith P. Hoyer and from Bond Mill, and we'll be meeting the Bond Mill team in just one second. You're looking at them right now. Just for those of you that haven't watched before, this is very similar to what we used to do in the studio where I am right now. All of our students at home have been distance learning, and we are doing this, obviously, via Zoom. Our game is just a bit different. No buzzers for our students, and uh, they don't get to pick the categories, but we do give them 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. And each of our teams will receive 18 questions, nine in the first half, nine in the second, of values ranging from five to 15 to 25 points. And at the end of the game, the team that has the highest score will be moving on in our competition. What about our questions? What categories do we use? Well, here they are. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. It is now time to meet the team from Bond Mill Elementary School. Let's say hello to the Captain Jordan. Jordan waved to everybody if you would, young man. Nice to have you back. And uh, Maria is here. Maria, wave to everybody, please. And Anvi is also with us today, all fifth graders at Bond Mill. All right, let's get started. I know you're ready. Let's get to the green things category. Three questions worth five, 15, and 25 points. Here's that five point question. Because a moth lays its eggs inside one of these, when the developing larvae start to wriggle around to get out, it gives the name to the famous Mexican jumping what's? Beans? Beans, this is Mexican jumping beans. You look at these beans and they're jumping around. You think, what is going on with those beans? Are those beans possessed? It's a larvae inside that is trying to get out. Good answer, five points. 15 points in green things. Farmers are being urged to sow more crops so as so to sequester more of what chemical element that's part of the gas used in photosynthesis? What do you think? Can you please repeat? Yes. Farmers are being urged to sow more crops so as to sequester or to plant back into the ground what chemical element, what chemical element that's part of the gas used in photosynthesis. So if you know the gas used in photosynthesis, you've got an idea of the element we're trying to put back into the ground. It seems like the gas element, not um, um, the correct answer there is carbon. We're trying to sequester carbon, as in carbon dioxide, which plants take out in before they produce their oxygen. Try this last one. It is a visual question, Bon Mill, worth 25 points. You know, flowers that are white, like these, often indicate that this process, essential for plant reproduction, happens at night. I think it's pollination. You're absolutely right, uh, Maria, because at night it attracts moths and bats that are out and they visit the flowers. Nice answer, 25 points. Let's go to the zoo. Since 1944, the U.S. Forest Service has relied on this familiar ursine animal to warn us only you 
can prevent forest fires. Is it a bear? It's a bear, yes, Smokey the bear, yes. All we needed was the bear. And he now says not, uh, uh, he doesn't say uh, just fires, wildfires. Only you can prevent wildfires. For 15 points in zoo, Scar the lion in The Lion King complains to Simba that while he is smarter than Mufasa, when it comes to strength, he is at the shallow end of this pool of hereditary markers. You've probably seen The Lion King a thousand times, and you've probably heard Scar say this. He said, yes, Mufasa, when it comes to strength, you know, he is uh, uh, obviously stronger than I am. But when it comes to smarts, he is at the shallow end of this pool of hereditary markers. Um, any, any, any hereditary was your clue there. The gene pool, the shallow end of the gene pool is what we were looking for there. Try the 25 point question in Zoo Parade. You can probably guess that jazz musician Charlie Parker's nickname, when I tell you one of his greatest hits is called Ornithology. What's his nickname? Ornithology. Is it Ornithology? Is it Shark? Ornithology is the study of birds. It's the study of birds. His nickname is Charlie Bird Parker. Let's go to the body assistance for five points. When it comes to different types of personalities, the very active people and those that are more laid back are labeled with what same two letters used in the blood typing system. Can you repeat the Some people are very active. They're different from people that are kind of laid back. And they call these people type blank and type blank. Just as we use those same two letters of the alphabet when telling you what kind of blood type you have. Type A and B. That's correct. A and B is correct. And you're a type A person if you're very active all the time, you can't sit still. And you're a type B if you're more of a couch potato. Thank you, Maria. 15 points in body systems, multiple choice. When it was revealed that the reason for the Grinch's nastiness was perhaps his heart, was too small, had his heart atrophied, hypertrophied, or petrified? Which of those words would mean something that shrinks? Atrophied, hypertrophied, or petrified? Um, can we have a better discussion? It's not my final answer, but... B Anvi, you've not been weighing in. What do you think? You've been just I, kind I, of I don't watching. I think it's hyper. She says, yeah, yeah, uh, Maria says it's hyper. Anvi, what do you think? I think, I think it's, it's hyper. hyper too. You think it's hyper as well? And uh, what about you, Captain? Um, um, I, think I think hyper as well. well. Because hyper yeah. hyper means mean too much. Hyper. It's the opposite. Atrophy is when you shrink, when something shrinks. Okay, let's try the 25 point question in body systems. A pancreas transplant for a person suffering from type 2 diabetes won't help because the disease means that the body is resistant to this hormone. Sugar? Say it again, Anvi, what'd you say? Sugar? Not sugar, no. Um, Correct answer there is insulin. Insulin. Insulin is the the hormone produced by the pancreas, and diabetics always have issues with that. All right, you have a score of 90 points at this point, Vaughn Mill. Okay, not as high as you did the last time you were on, but we have a lot more questions coming up. I know you're gonna get them in the second half. We'll talk to you guys in just a few minutes. It is now time to meet the team from Judith P. Hoyer Montessori School, led by their wonderful captain, Justin. Justin waved everybody out there that's watching. How about Alex? Alex is back too with his matching Judith P. Hoyer Montessori t-shirt. And joining them also similarly dressed is Dylan. Hey, Dylan, 
Welcome back to the show. All right, it is now time for you to start answering questions. Again, we have nine questions for you in this first half of the game. Let's go to the green things. We have a five, a 15, and a 25, and here is the five-point question, and we start with a picture. We start with a picture. You know, trees, they can't be bad. They can't be bad, but they can be naughty. What you're looking at here is a kind of wood from a P-initialed evergreen tree known as a naughty, K-N-O-T-T-Y, not N-A-U-G-H-T-Y, naughty what? Pine. 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 That's pine. naughty <laughs> pine. That's exactly right. You probably have some of that in your house. A lot of times doors are made of naughty pine. Good answer. 15 points, green things. A prune is a dried plum. It's also known as nature's remedy because it is a natural one of these L-initialed liquids that makes you go, go to the bathroom easier. What do you think, Alex? What kind of L-initialed liquid or substance that is produced by a prune helps to make going to the bathroom easier? It's l -initialed. You see them advertised on television all the time. They're called laxatives. Laxatives. You take that if you're suffering from constipation. Let's go to 25 points in green things. All right. Listen to these words because there are clues in the words. While leaves contain chloroplasts, what parts of the plant contain the chromoplasts that help lure in would be pollinators? Uh, I've heard. Repeat the question. Okay. Chloroplasts are in the leaves. But what parts of the plant contain the chromoplasts, C-H-R-O-M-O, -O, chromoplasts, that help to lure in to the plant would-be pollinators? Do you guys have the plant? What is that called? I think you're overthinking it. Uh, it's the petals on the flower because chromo means color. So the chromoplasts give color to the petals and the bright colors are what attract the bees and some of the other pollinators. All right, let's go to the zoo. There's a new picture book out, very popular at the moment. It's on the bestsellers list because it's filled with wise sayings. The title of the book is The Boy, The Fox, The Horse, and This Animal, A Nearly Blind Burrowing Animal That Gardeners Hate. Uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's beaver, maybe? Oh, no, no, no. Round, round, round. Oh, a bunny. A bunny. A bunny. I think a bunny's a good guess. The correct answer is the mole. The mole. Moles are nearly blind and, you know, they, gardeners hate them because they dig tunnels and they disrupt the roots and then they, they eat all the vegetables you're trying to grow out there. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Good book. Check it out. Zoo for 15 points. It turns out that animals have many rituals like us humans. For instance, when elephants and chimpanzees and dolphins lose a member of their group, they experience this G, initialed emotion, in which they mourn and feel sad at the death. Grief. Grief. Say it again. Grief. Grief. Grief is right. Good. Got yourself 15 points. For 25 points in zoo. In the movie The Emperor's New Groove, Cusco was turned into a llama. A llama, like a camel and a mule, can carry things for long distances. Those animals are known as beasts of what? What do you what think, do you think it is, Alex and Dylan? Of the desert, maybe? Yeah. yeah. No. no. Well, I'm sure you've heard of this before. They're called beasts of burden. Beasts of burden, where they lo load things onto animals and then they carry them. 
mules and donkeys and camels, sometimes even elephants or beasts of burden. All right, let's go to the body. Five points. When you were chosen to represent your school in the science bowl, chances are you were grinning from one of these body parts to the other. Dylan, say it again. Talk it nice and loud so we can hear you. What did you just say? I don't know the other one. Ears. Ears. Did you say ears? Yes. Yes. Yeah, grinning from ear to ear is the phrase. Grinning from ear to ear. That means you have a big smile on your face. All right, we'll give you the five points there. Body assistance for 15 points. After losing a football playoff game, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers expressed his disappointment by saying, I'm completely what? A term often used to convey courage, as in, it took a lot of blanks to do that. Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, we're looking for a phrase that people often say when they're disappointed. But other times people say that, you know, if you do something courageous, like what you're doing right now, it takes a lot of these to do it. Not courage, but what body part? It takes a lot of what? Heart. It, takes, it, does take, it does take a lot of heart. Give me something else. Uh, it takes a lot of brains. It takes a lot of brains too. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts. And Aaron Rodgers says, I am completely gutted after he lost that game. Body assistance for 25 points. If you've not ridden a bicycle in a long time, it usually comes back to you right away. Because even though your brain is in your head, these body parts are said to have memory. So what body parts do you need to ride a bicycle that would have to work after a long time of not working? Yeah. Actually, it's what it's what's in the legs. Muscles. Muscles have memory. Muscles have memory, which is why you can sometimes do things long after you stop doing them, and somehow it just comes back to you. It just comes back to you. Uh, you have 75 points at this point. All right, you got a lot of ground to make up in the second half, but you can do it. You can do it. We'll be back with you in a few moments and talk to you about yourselves and your schools and give you your last nine questions. All right, if you have not met these young people before when they were on on their first appearance, let's talk to them right now. Let's go to the captain of the team at Bond Mill and Jordan. And Jordan, you guys seem to know an awful lot about science. How did you prepare for this science bowl? Um, my my science, science bowl was, was two, 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 every, every day. day. Except Every day. Wow. wow. Um, um, be and do, do some, some kind of thing. thing. Science, Science watch watching a whole episode. episode. Um, um, about, about some reading, reading the article. Reading we do, do something, something, something to enhance knowledge. Sounds like you really, really prepared for this. And it does show, and uh, I'm sure all of you know at Vaughn Mill that you were the county champs. You know, just recently you won it all. So um, you're trying to repeat this year and you're making a good start at it. Keep up the good luck, uh, good work here in the second half here. Let's talk to uh, Alex, excuse me, uh, uh, Maria. Maria, come on back up. Maria, nice to have you back with us again. Part of a legacy here because her brother Martin also has been uh, a distinguished player here on our Science Bowl. Uh, tell me about these sessions. Did you play against each other when you practiced, or did you have alternates? How did that work? Um, how, how we would do it is we would watch, watch a video, video and, then and then we would try, try to be the team, team on, on the video. video. Oh, I see. And did you win sometimes? Yeah, yeah most, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. And, you know, it's almost like when you're sitting at home watching something like Jeopardy, it's so easy when you're sitting at home, but when you're on the front line, if you're the contestant, sometimes it makes it a little bit tougher, but you're doing a nice job here today. And let's talk to Anvi. Anvi, come on back up here and tell folks a little bit about uh, how you know 
your science. What do you do to learn science? We, we learn, learn learning in this class, and then we, we make our computer at, at you and prepare. Yeah, well, you obviously, were, you paid attention well. And really, this game is about not just what you learn in science class. It's about being curious about life itself. Because, you know, we bring in movies and cartoons and books and all kinds of things. So if you're aware, and you guys are aware, uh, you do well on this program. So keep up your good work in the second half here. All right. Bon Mill, if you're ready. All right. Uh, you've got 90 points at this point, so I know you want to add to that tally. Let's get them. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. We start the second half. Since fog is often so dense you can't see three feet in front of you. Sometimes you can't see the hand in front of your face when it's foggy. Since fog doesn't fall from the sky, like rain or snow or sleet, it is not considered by weathermen to be a form of this. Um, precipitation. That's right. It is not a form of precipitation. Good. Five points. 15 <laughs> points and let's get physical. This radioactive metal and the last of the naturally occurring chemical elements on the periodic table is named for a planet. Name that radioactive metal. Is it plutonium? Not plutonium. That was a good guess. It is uranium. Uranium. That was a good guess, though, uh, Jordan. Good guess. Let's get this next one for 25 points. There's a TV series that I like called Blown Away. It's about blowing glass. You know, you can take molten glass and, and make these beautiful shapes. Well, glass is a strange substance. It's amorphous. It was, it's originally a disorganized liquid with these M initial chemical components that are made up of atoms arranged haphazardly. M initial chemical units made up of atoms that are arranged haphazardly. That's what glass is. Um, has to start with an M. Made of atoms. Morphs? Not morphs, things. Molecules. Like, like molecules is the answer there. Atoms make up molecules. Let's try potpourri for five points. If you're making chocolate chip cookies and you want them to rise, the recipe likely calls for sodium bicarbonate, better known as this, a chemical that's also good for brushing your teeth with. Um, baking soda? Yes, indeed, Mari, it is baking soda. Baking soda is good for so many things. But yes, that is almost always in a recipe for chocolate chip cookies for 15 points in potpourri. In The Wizard of Oz, when the wicked witch is doused with water, she melts away. But if she had undergone spontaneous combustion, what would have happened to her? Would she, would she have blown up? She, would she have what? Blown, blown up? up? Uh, not I quite. She blowed? She, why? Pressure. Uh, combustion um, means molecules. She would have burst into flames. Combustion is burning up, so she would have spontaneously started to burn up. Awful thought. All right, 25 points in potpourri is a visual question. Look at your picture, please. Of all the noble gases on the periodic table, noble gases are gases that generally don't react with any other chemicals. Probably the best known of the noble gases is this one that all the glittering signs on the Las Vegas Strip depend on to glow. See, I would, I would think, think not because it's light to light to the sign, but it's liquid or room temperature. Okay, we're seeing nods there. Uh, uh, Jordan, what did you say? You said? I thought, I thought it was neon. It is neon. 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 Yes, it is. It is oh. neon. Good. So you got yourself those points there. All right, let's go to your last three questions in Dateline. Five points. There is a woman who is an expert on lightning bugs, fireflies, and she described this B initial phenomenon 
as living light. Bioluminescence. Absolutely right. Five points. You knew that one cold. Nicely done. Bioluminescence. For 15 points, an investigation into the cause of the composer Beethoven's deafness and eventual death showed that his hair contained an unusually large amount of a dangerous chemical. Once used in making pipes and paint and in gasoline, originally known as plumbum, with the chemical symbol PB. PB. Iron? No, iron. 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 Um. Anvi, what do you think? You're not talking much. PB. Uh. If you know the chemical, if you know your peri periodic table, it was once called plumbum, but we know it as what? Pipes and paint. Lead. Lead is the answer there. Oh, hold on. Lead. I but then they yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry you got confused there, Jordan. Here's the last question for you in the game. This pandemic has made us Americans very familiar with Dr. Anthony Fauci, the Pfizer and the Moderna vac vaccines, and an agency called the CDC, the federal agency overseeing the fight against COVID-19. 25 points if you can tell me what CDC is stands for? Mm -hmm. I think D is like, like drug, drug, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. I can't, I can't see drug. drug. I think, I think, Mario, you're thinking about the Food and Drug Administration. This is the other, the CDC. We hear about it all the time. It's the Centers for <laughs> Disease Control. Centers mm -hmm. for Disease Control is the answer there. Okay, you end the game with 130 points. Will it be enough to send you to the semifinals? We'll find out in a couple moments. Let's talk again to the team from Judith P. Hoyer. Uh, they did such a great job the first time they were on, and they're, uh, they're trying to repeat that win this time. Let's find out about the captain. Let's talk to uh, Justin. Justin, uh, that was a tough first round for you guys. Yeah, you were trying to pull out some answers, but I know a lot of them were probably on the tip of your tongue. Uh, in the second half, I know you're going to do even better here. Tell me about how you prepared for the game, you and your teammates. Well, well we, we practiced, practiced uh, every day, and, and we practiced, like, like uh, uh, and, and we watched the football by the time. time. Yes, I'm sure you're very sick of hearing me and watching me because of all those episodes you've watched. But those are the best ways to prepare for this because it lets you see how we ask questions, the kind of topics we use, and hopefully get you ready for this competition. Yeah, obviously you've taken those lessons well. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's talk to Alex. Hey, Alex, welcome back to the show. Hey, Alex. Tell me uh, a little bit about what you do in your spare time when you're not studying, because I know you study a lot. I do. Yeah. Read. I do violin. And sometimes some play games. Yeah, it sounds like a normal, a normal kid agenda there. Yeah, enjoy as best you can. And now that the weather's getting better, you can get outside after school is out. And uh, yeah, it's been a long haul for you guys with distance learning, but obviously you succeeded and you're on the science ball. Let's talk to Dylan. Hey, Dylan, welcome back to the show. Dylan, I, uh, you were telling me earlier uh, that you had some ideas about what you wanted to do when you got older. Tell people again what that is. I want to be a professional athlete. Yes, and I know. What are some of the things you do uh, for fun that maybe have influenced what you want to do as a career? I play, I play soccer, soccer. Um, football. I, um, I play basketball. You're an all-round athlete. You're an all-round athlete. Yes. Well, that's great because, you know, my, your mind is important and so is your body. And you've got to exercise both. And obviously, you're a great student. And uh, you're a good team player. And you know what team support is all about if you're playing on all those athletic teams. If you're ready, we have nine more questions for you from Let's Get Physical, Potpourri, and Dateline. You got some points to get here. Let's go. Let's get physical for five points. When David was swinging that rock in his sling and about to let it fly at the giant Goliath, the stone had plenty of this kind of energy before it went kinetic. 
Uh, I'm, I'm adding momentum. Say it again. I think it's momentum. 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 Uh, Alex, what were you going to say? Potential, potential energy. energy. You want to say potential? And what about you, Dylan? Do either of those appeal to you? I'm going to do Alex. You're going to do Alex's, so two potentials uh, and a momentum. Your choice, Justin. Okay, okay. I, I thought my was Alex. Alex. All right, and that was a good choice because it is potential energy. Alex, I saw you sit up nice and straight because you knew that one. All right, let's get to the 15-point question. Nicely done. The largest moon in our solar system, its name is Ganymede, orbits this planet and is one of the original five moons discovered there by Galileo. Uh, um, I, I think it's Jupiter. It is Jupiter. Absolutely right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. For 25 points. Spontaneous combustion that can and does happen inside grain elevators on farms occurs because a slow version of this O initial process is happening. Uh, what do you, what do you think? think? This is slow version of an O initial process. Oxygen. Say it again. Oxygen. We're going to give that to you. Yes, it's oxidation. Oxidation. Yes, because burning is oxygen uh, mixing up there with the air. That's fine, included with the, the fuel. Let's go to Pope Brie for five points. A female bear is called a sow, S-O-W. A female rabbit is called a doe, D-O-E. A female duck is... Well, a duck. Well, a female lion and a female tiger both have the same suffix. They're known as, give me either one, a male, a, a female lion or a female tigress. They both sound the same. Say it again, Alex. Lioness and tigress. Lioness and tigress is correct. Absolutely right. Good. Five points. Fifteen points. If you know the Incredible Hulk, you know that Bruce Banner changed into the Incredible Hulk character when he was exposed to a high dose of these rays that mutated Bruce's DNA. These are rays that can easily pierce matter where the alpha and beta rays cannot. What rays, not the alpha, not the beta, they can get through and damaged DNA. I think it's gamma rays. It's gamma rays. You got it. Absolutely right. For 25 points in potpourri. You've seen ads on TV for this. Shingles. The dreaded shingles disease. For which a vaccine is strongly recommended. Will likely become quite rare in the future. You probably will never get it. Since the only way you can get shingles when you become an adult is if you had this childhood disease for which most kids are now vaccinated against. You probably got the vaccine for this childhood disease that can lead to shingles later in your life. Name the childhood disease. Chicken, chicken pox. pox. You got it. It is chicken pox. Perfect. Dateline for five points is a visual question. Look at the picture. One of my favorite animals. Sometimes called a whistle pig. This rodent becomes a reluctant meteorologist every February 20, February 2nd in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Groundhog? That's the groundhog, yeah. Whether or not he sees his shadow determines whether or not uh, spring is coming quickly or not. Here's your 15-point question in Dateline. This form of electromagnetic radiation was discovered in 1895 by William Rentgen when he was able to view all the bones inside his hand. Okay, okay so, so it's radiation inside, inside of the somebody's hand. hand. What do you, what do you think, think about that? I didn't hear the question. question. There's a kind of, they call it electromagnetic radiation, Dylan. It was discovered in 1895 by a man called William Rentgen. And he discovered this because when he was using it, he was able to see all the bones inside his hand. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, that's right. He discovered mm -hmm. x-rays. Perfect. 25 points. Last question of the game. A wonderful fossil find in the state of Montana is being called the dueling dinos. Du dueling dinos featuring these two best known dinosaurs, both beginning with the letter T, fighting together. Say it again. It is T Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Triceratops. Absolutely right. Nice game, guys. Nice game. You came back. That means you end the game with 210 points. Judy Hoyer, you're nicely done. Nicely done. We knew this was going to be a close game because both of these are championship teams and we are proud of all of our players here today. Our final tally is Vaughn Mill 130, Judith P. Hoyer Montessori 210. So Hoyer, you are moving on to the semifinals. We wish you luck. Let's give a round of applause to both of our teams here. You guys brought a lot of honor to all of your schools and to your families and to yourselves. And uh, just thank you for doing this. It's been a tough hoe this pandemic, but you've made it look easy. And I hope you had some fun today. And I have, hope you learned something. I hope you learned something as well. And maybe not about science, but about what it's like to be on TV, a little bit about poise, a little bit about sportsmanship. And a lot of you have a lot of that going for you already. Thank you very much and congratulations. And to all of you watching, I hope you tune in again and follow us as we go through the season here as we head to the finale. I'm Dave Zarin and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.